Well, hey guys, thanks for coming. We appreciate everybody being here. Uh, we're really excited about this football team. Uh, obviously, what we did last year was significant, but you know what we're trying to talk to our team about now is 2017's over, and this is not the 2017 football team anymore. This is the 2018 football team, and right now they haven't accomplished anything. So we've got to start all over again. Uh, we've got to rebuild some leadership, uh, and I, I feel really good about getting that done with this group. I think our team understands our identity. I think they understand the culture around here now, and uh, we look forward to trying to sustain uh, what we've done. You know, as hard as it was uh, to get there last year and to do what we did, it's even harder to sustain it. And I, I understand that. I've been through this before, and, and these guys are going to get a dose of that. Um, but I think we're, I think they're excited about it. I think they're uh, energized, and, uh, and we look forward to having a good year. So. Coach, what is the identity of this football team this year? Yeah, you know what, Eric, I don't think it'll ever change here. You know, we're, we're the underdog. We're the guys that play with a chip on our shoulder. You know, we're an independent. It's kind of an us against the world mentality. And I was telling our team last night in our team meeting, last year's team was the first one we really had that really bought into that. Uh, that and it bonded us together. It gave us a, a common goal. And uh, I think we understand that that's who we are. So every week we tee it up, it, it's us and our fans against everybody. And we wouldn't have it any other way. New players in big positions? Well, you know, we've got a lot of guys back, particularly on defense. You know, nine starters back on defense. feel really good about that. Uh, we didn't lose a lot of guys on offense, but the guys we lost were key players. You know, obviously Tyler, at quarterback, and Larry and Jalil, who's, you know, in the NFL right now. So those are big people to fix, uh, to replace. I'm not as worried about replacing the talent as I am the leadership. You know, Larry Rose was a great leader for us for, for three or four years. Uh, Dalton Harrington was a great leader for us. That's the vacuum that worries me more than the athletic ability. We've got good players at, at every position that can replace those guys athletically, but replacing that leadership and having guys that are willing to stand up and set the standard and uh, guys that are, it's more important for them to win than it is to be liked, that's what made Larry a great leader. You know, he, he wanted to succeed more than he wanted to be liked. And so, in, in, you know, in fact, that made him be respected by everybody even more. And those are the guys we got to find. What's kind of your timetable for, for naming a starting quarterback this year? Yeah, I don't – probably right up to the week of the game. Uh, you know, we're going to let uh, Nick and Matt Romero battle that out. Uh, Josh Atkins had a good camp for us also. He'll be in that mix a little bit too. But spring enabled us to get it down to the top two and three. And uh, so now we can just let those guys go to, go to work. Does each quarterback bring to the table? It's unique to them. Well, you know, Nick has played a lot of football for us. You know, when Tyler has been hurt or uh, something's happened, Nick has stepped in. He's won football games for us, so he's got experience on his side. He understands the offense really well. He's really an intelligent player. Um, Matt is uh, Matt Romero is really a gym rat type of guy. He makes a lot of plays. He makes things happen. He can extend plays, uh, which is valuable. Uh, he's mobile. Um, and obviously has a really strong arm. So, you know, I like those things about him. Josh Adkins is a, a guy we redshirted last year as a freshman uh, that I really like a lot. Josh is really intelligent. Uh, he's very accurate throwing the ball, a little bit more athletic than most people give him credit for. And then, uh, you know, we have Cam Matthews and Jeremy Hodge behind him. They're two other freshmen we redshirted. They're going to be good players down the line too. So we've got the perfect storm right there. Uh, you know, if you are going to replace a quarterback, you'd like to have somebody with some experience. You'd like to probably have a new guy in there like Romero, and, and you'd like to have a young guy coming. So we've got things in place to, to make that work out. Whoever that person is going to be, do you think you're going to leave the country in past attempts this year? Is that just something where you were really comfortable with Tyler and the next person has to be more, more balanced? Yeah, I don't know that we will lead the nation in, in attempts. We may. I mean, who knows? I mean, we're, we're not going to change the offense, though, Jason. You know, we're going to – we're an air raid offense, you know, that's what we do. We throw the ball. Uh, what we need to do, though, is get more from our quarterback of checking us in to run plays when it's advantageous to run the ball. And Tyler struggled with that at times, and so we didn't ask him to do a lot of that. We asked him to do some other things. But I think these guys have a better grasp of the offense, and so that might, you know, enable us to run the ball more effectively and uh, get into a few more runs. You have a lot of trying to expand some offensive line, too, is that what does that do for a, a first a new starter and then the running game as well? Yeah, I mean, our, our uh, quarterback is going to have really good people around him. You know, I, I, I love our wide receiver core. I think it's probably the best one we've had here. Even though we lost Jalil, I think the guys we have coming back are pretty special. Uh, same thing at running back. We've got great speed back there. And the offensive line is going to be, I think, can be uh, better than what it's been in the past. I think we've got a lot more depth. Uh, we may rely on one or two freshmen to pro provide a little bit of depth there also, but uh, they're bigger, they're stronger, 
Um, all of them, a lot of them have experience, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think that is going to help. Is there going to help you? Yeah, we don't we don't have any guys with any problems. Demarcus Owens uh, had to have a, a some dental work done, so he won't be here till actually August first, uh, but is cleared right after that. And uh, other than that, we we're in pretty good. Max Wilhite, our freshman center, uh, actually is going to have to have meniscus surgery, so he might miss the first two weeks of camp. Um, but other than that, we're good to go. Well, Coach, you talked about this being a new year and like not living off the of last year's success. Have you had to fight complacency at all over the offseason, or has it served as more of a motivator? You know, I, I really haven't. I, I think we've had really good leadership from our guys. I know Coach Decker really felt good about the way they worked this summer. Uh, I think we had some guys to really step up and, and start to emerge into that role as a leader to avoid those type of things. You know, around here we call that the disease of me. You know, we don't, we don't want anybody worried about me. We want anybody worried about the Aggies. And uh, you know, I think we've done a good job of explaining that to the team and exposing that to them so that when that does show up, we, we, can, we can stop it in a hurry. Because that, that happens to all teams. All teams go through that. Um, so and I, I feel good about where we are, and I don't think complacency is a problem. Mario's tweeted about season tickets. It seems like they're doing well. So I guess, um, do you feel more of a... Uh, buzz in the community after what you guys did last year because you made a practice this year? Yeah, I think definitely that, that's happened. You know, obviously the fans that went to the bowl game, I mean, that was historic and, and set a record there for the Arizona Bowl. And I think it's carrying over to this season. And I certainly hope it does. And, and I hope everybody understands that first game is going to be a brutal game for us. I mean, Wyoming is, you know, in my opinion, one of the top three teams in the Mountain West, may, maybe the best team in the Mountain West. Um, they returned their whole defense, and they were one of the best defensive football teams in the nation last year. So this is going to be a daunting challenge for us starting off with, especially with a, a new starter at quarterback, that we are going to need a huge crowd there in, in that game because that one right off the bat is going to be a real test. Are you trying to see, I guess, maybe get Jason probably more involved in the offense and see what kind of different things you're going to be doing? Yeah, well, Jason, obviously, it's the speed. I mean, he's got tremendous speed, and he's – awesome in the passing game. I mean, he catches the ball just like a wide receiver. So um, getting Jason on the corner is pivotal. You need to get him in space. He's not an up the middle runner as much as what he is on the outside and getting the ball in the passing game. Uh, and then having Royce Caldwell in the backfield also. You know, We didn't have Royce last year. He was out with academic issues and he's back now and done very well. So that gives us, that's our two fastest players. Uh, and we also need to find ways to get both those guys on the field at the same time. You know, maybe use one as a slot and one as a running back on certain issues. And, um, but those guys can be game changers. Do you think Jason is he capable of kind of carrying a load the way Larry did last year? Oh, I, I think absolutely. You know, Jason uh, is kind of the same as Larry. You know, he came in here, I think he's 150 pounds now. He's almost 190-something. Uh, you know, Coach Decker's done a great job with him, bulking him up a little bit and things like that. So, uh, no, I think Jason's looking for a great year. Was ball camp more about timing for your offense than I guess with the new quarterback and your receivers? Yeah, I think it's it's timing, and again, it, it's you know finding the leaders, you know finding the guys that are going to step up for us and be be the alpha dogs on that offense. But uh, the timing is big. Having our players get comfortable with each other. We do have a couple of guys that weren't here. You know, Eric Pulliam was a junior college offensive lineman that just got here in May. Caleb Mills. Uh, you know, another wide receiver looks at you like Jaleel Scott. I mean, he's a six foot five wide receiver. He just got here in May. So getting those guys acclimated quickly uh, is big for us also. You touched on the fan aspect of how it feels different, but I don't know how many people in this building at all were alive the last time that you came off the bowl game victory. How has this felt different for you, for the team? What have you seen just the way you guys carry yourselves? Leading up to this first practice. Yeah, I wasn't alive last time we had a bowl victory, so the, so that was I know nobody else was. Uh, you know, Eric, I think there's a uh, it, not a complacency, but I think there's a, a validation maybe to the plan that we had and what we put in place, and I think that gives us some confidence moving forward that you know, we've done the right things. And um, you know, everybody needs a little bit of luck in this game to have a good season. You, know, you got to stay away from injuries. You got to have the ball bounce your way a little bit, but. I think we've done everything in our power to put us in a position to win again. And now it's just going out each day and working hard and, uh, and having the confidence to know you can do it. And, and having done it, there, there's nothing like, I mean, I can talk to these guys about winning until I'm blue in the face. But once they get to experience it and they get a taste of it and how good that feels, that changes you. you know? and, and that's the change that I've seen in our guys. I think they're hungry for that again. Having a legitimate uh, good defense, 
going into a season like last year, I think everyone thought that they were going to be better, but they played really well. So having that confidence in that side of the ball in our camp in the season, how how, uh, how much really does that take off of you as an offensive coach too? Yeah, that, that's really big, Jason, because, you know, again, I, I don't care. Whenever you start over the new quarterback, you may struggle early offensively, and we may struggle early in the first couple of games offensively just breaking a new quarterback and those things. So our defense really has to keep us in games. You know, the first three games at least, you know, they need to really play good to let us get our feet on the ground. So we do have a lot of confidence that we can get that done. Uh, we return a lot of those guys. Um, you know, obviously Coach Spaziani is a source of great confidence for our players and the defensive staff. And um, yeah, I think our guys are excited about taking that role. I've already talked to our defense about this, that. You know, they need to step up these first couple of games, and they need to understand the issues that we're going to be dealing with offensively here a little bit too. And I think they're anxious to prove they can do that. But to clarify, the philosophy isn't going to be just play field position and let the defense win the game, you're going to take your shot. No, we go, we're not good enough to do that. I mean, we can't just put our defense out there and expect to win, you know, 10 to 7 and things like that. I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we've got to score points to win. We understand that. And, it's that, and that's really college football right down the line anymore. You know, I don't care. Even, you know, if Alabama plays Clemson, you know, Clemson's going to score 30. You know, I mean, they're, they're just that good. And so you've got to get stops at key times, but uh, very rarely are you shutting people down defensively anymore. So, um, you know, we, we can't play conservative football offensively and win. Can you touch on that first game? What do you think your schedule overall as an independent here? I love the schedule. I think it's uh, geographically, it's much more friendly to us. You know, we don't have to travel all the way across the country like we did in the Sun Belt, and especially back to back. That travel begins to wear on you after a while, uh, and uh, this is much more friendly to us. I think for our fans, it's uh, more recognizable. A lot of these teams we're playing were old WAC members, you know, Utah State, and um, you know now they're Mountain West members, and that's good for us. You know, we'd like to have exposure in the Mountain West anyway. Uh, we kept a rival game with UTEP. I, I love the fact that we get to play an FCS game. I don't think people really uh, realize how advantageous that is to people. You know, when that's a game that you should win, and, and it's a game to help you get your feet on the ground. And we've never been able to play. You know, we've, we've never had that luxury. Uh, so being able to do that is a help also. So I guess talking about the schedule, is it frustrating that you had to schedule Liberty twice? Though? No, you know, I mean, I, I, that obviously came from Liberty's standpoint more than us because the NCAA granted them that for moving into FBS level. Um, I think it's actually kind of intriguing to play a team twice. It's kind of an NFL model, and I've talked to a lot of NFL coaches about that. How do you handle that? How much do you change from game one to game two, or do you change at all? And it's interesting getting their take on that. Uh, so I think it's unique. It's something that's uh, that's going to be interesting for us. Coach, could you reflect over the last few months with the moves made with the assistant coaches and extension, and just like how that'll set up the program going forward? You talking about the assistant coaches' contracts? And the, yeah, I mean, uh, we've we've got a tremendous staff here, and I will tell you this: you know, head coaches are really overrated. <laughs> you know, the guys that win and make the big difference are the assistant coaches. Um, so if I'm going to be given credit for anything, it ought to be that I've hired a really good off, uh, offensive and defensive staff here. Um, that that's the guys that really have made the difference. So to be able to get them a June contract, which is what we were able to get those guys, that gives them and their families a lot of stability to know that they're really wanted here. Um, and obviously we're still, you know, not, we're one of the lowest paid staffs in the country. So you got to do things to make these guys feel like they're appreciated and wanted. And our administration bent over backwards to make that happen for those guys. Um, and some other things, you know, we make it a great working environment here. You know, ours, ours is a little bit more of a family atmosphere here, and our families are very involved, and the wives and the kids and everybody with our coaching staff. So uh, we want to keep these guys here as long as we can. And, and eventually, look, we're going to lose some coaches here coming up. I mean, I'm surprised it didn't happen last year. I mean, we were fifth in the nation, I think, in passing offense. and. I don't know, fifth and third down offense. And, and, you know, these guys, especially these young guys that we have on our staff, they're going to get opportunities if you keep doing things like that. You know, our defense was second in the nation in sacks. I mean, eventually people start to notice those things, and, and you're going to lose coaches. But hopefully we're grooming other coaches that are younger that are going to step into those roles and, uh, and just keep building for the future. How would you guys celebrate? Which, or did you with the, with the assistant coaches and getting their pay raise? 
Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> I think at the time most of us were on vacation at that time anyway. Um, but, you know, our coaches have been very appreciative of, of what they've gotten. And, again, it's a, it's a great group of guys. We, had a, we have a staff gathering uh, the night before camp starts every year. So we had a big cookout over here actually at the office. And Mario came to that with us, enjoyed that with us. And we have all of our wives and kids over here and play some games and those type of things. And, uh, again, I, it's fun to come to work when you work with a group of people like I do. Uh, we posted the incentives on Twitter, and I saw this over and over again, so I just got to throw it out there. Only 50000 for a national championship? Well, I mean, anybody can win a national championship, Eric. You shouldn't get much for that, right? That's, <laughs> I, I, uh, that's the furthest thing from my mind, okay? I, I, I'm not worried about that at all. I'm just trying to get a first down on Wyoming. <laughs> kind of things just... Looking at the first couple of days of camps, obviously you can't do as much without pads, but what, what kinds of things do you look for as a head coach the first couple of days of fall camp? Well, I think, again, it's the brand new guys that we've gotten here, the freshmen. We want to make sure we get them in the right position. Uh, the junior college guys that weren't here for spring but are here now, uh, make sure we get them taught and acclimated as quickly as we can. Uh, and then it's the first two days when you're just in helmet, it's, it's learning. It's just learning the offensive and defensive system so that when you do put the pads on that third day, uh, you can practice with some great speed. Is the force healthy? Is the force healthy? Yeah, I think uh, Ronnie's had a good summer. Uh, you know, it's been a, a long summer for him. He's been some ups and downs get, getting back healthy, but um, feel really good about where he is right now. I don't know that his conditioning is where it needs to be right now because he hadn't been able to run as much as most of these guys for the summer. Uh, but as far as his health and everything, he, he's good to go. Want to be Perkins in or something? Yeah, probably Perkins right now. You know, Shamad is a guy we're going to be able to move to safety now. And, and we've got some freshmen in there that they're going to be able, uh, able to get a look at also. You talked about having nine, uh, nine starters back on defense. How many do you have on offense? And without, uh, you know, without having a returning quarterback or running back, who, who do you expect to lead? Yeah, we really, it, it's probably seven or eight offensive guys, Ken, depending on how you want to look at it. I look at it as eight, eight starters returning. So, you know, we really lost Jalil, Larry, and Tyler. Uh, I, you know, it, it's funny. I was more worried about the leadership offensively than I was defensively you know, because of all the returners we had. But as I watched our guys work out over the summer and talking to Coach Decker, he really felt like the offensive guys had really stepped up. You know, Jason Huntley has become a real leader for us. Jamin Smith has been a real leader for us. Brian Trujillo. Uh, you know, again, we got a lot of guys up front that, that uh, had been around, that played a lot of football. Um, you know, O.J. Clark and Isaiah Lottie, those are guys that are kind of alpha dogs for us on the, on the uh, offensive side. I'd like to get, honestly, get to the point where that quarterback is the leader, you know, and, uh, and find that guy. But until you really get a guy that's established in there and settled, it's hard for them to take that role. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Coach, any fans are always excited for things that are new. So not so much from the team, but like uniforms or anything like that, anything new that you can touch on right now? Uh, you know what, Eric, I, I'm probably the last one to find out because I, I don't worry about it too much. I, I know there are some uniform things that they've, they've done with and some things with the helmets uh, and things like that that will be, uh, be new starting out with. And I think um, there's probably some plans to dress the stadium up a little bit, maybe have something about the Arizona Bowl and things like that, and, and hopefully the Sun Bowl. You know, we something in there from the 59-60 Sun Bowl. I've never seen a sign in there about winning that, so it would be nice to have all those up in there. Uh, and I think things like that are going to happen naturally for us as we move forward.